Okay, so I've managed to enter in my survey data. I've already converted it into a comma delimited form, and now I can actually do different types of analyses with my data. Now, obviously, there are some of these questions which will not work very well in a survey. With this sample survey that I have here, um, I have three written responses. I also have free written responses where people have chosen not to answer, so I have a lot of missing values. And so because of that, I may not want to utilize those into my analysis. Now, anytime that I'm looking at survey data, the first thing I'm going to want to do is take a look at my descriptive statistics. So I'm going to go ahead and go over here to descriptives, and I'm going to click on descriptive statistics. And then what you should see in this little page is I've got my output, I've got a list of all of my different survey questions here, and I kind of want to extend that a little bit just because I want to be able to read these different variables. So I'm going to look at whether or not people report belonging at CAUTI versus whether or not they've experienced microaggression, because that's the kind of survey data that we've had. So I'm going to go ahead and put experienced microaggression with my variables, um, and then I am going to put, um, you can kind of see that the different labels are coming up. We're going to go ahead and say, do you feel welcome in your suite? Do you feel well belonging in your suite? And do you feel belonging at Cotty? Now, some of these are yes, no questions. So we're not necessarily going to be able to report things like means with these. But what you will kind of notice is that um, when we're on a zero to one scale, as we are with have you experienced a microaggression? Do you feel belonging in your suite? And do you feel belonging at Cotty? All of these are yes, no questions. The closer you're getting to one, the more people are reporting yes. So here you can kind of see when I'm reporting my mean. Um, uh, for experienced microaggressions, that's about 0.62, which means that out of the data that I have, um, over half report experiencing a microaggression at least once. With belonging in the suite, it's around 0.88, which means that most people report that they feel they belong out of the 34 that responded. And the same is true for the sense of belonging at Cotty. Now, with respect to whether sweet, uh, your suite is welcoming, this is on a one through five scale. You can kind of tell that because it has a response of four while the rest of these do not. And so you can see that most people feel pretty welcome in their suites as well. When I go into these descriptive statistics, um, you get uh, which are valid, which means there's a value there. If any values are missing, mean, standard deviation, and a minimum and a maximum. This is going to be really, really useful when you're reporting your descriptive statistics, which you must do before you report any inferential statistics, because I need to know what your means and your standard deviations are. Now, we can also look at frequency tables. Um, that's really if you want to take a look at that. But again, if I'm not really interested in the frequency tables, I can uncheck that box and it'll disappear. But we can take a look at a plot. We can plot the distribution. You can see most people report belonging at Cotty and their suite. Most people feel that their suite is pretty welcoming. You can also do a correlation plot. This could be a little bit difficult to really follow because a lot of these are yes, no questions. Um, and you can see that the data is super duper inflated. So with this kind of data, you can't really do a correlation with it. A lot of you are working with Likert scales, though, and that will make working with a correlation much, much easier. So keep that in mind. I'm going to move away from plots, and now I'm going to move into my statistics. Now, I'm also interested in the standard error of the mean. That's something that I like to use to judge statistical significance. If you want to look at the variance, if you want to look at the range, if you want to look at quartiles, median, mode, skewness, or kurtosis of the distribution, I don't really care about kurtosis of the distribution, but if you do, you can put that information in there. So here are just a few things that you can do with these different descriptive statistics. Now, 
I know that you're probably more interested in p-test. So let's kind of see if we can take a look at a few different types of t-test. So in this particular case, we are going to be looking at responses to two different questions or on the survey. And so um, depending on what you're doing, you might either want to look at an independent samples t-test or a paired sample. Since these are questions on the same test, paired samples might be better just because the response to one question and the second question are not necessarily independent of each other. But let's just take a look at independent samples and see if we can actually do that. So I'm, a, I'm in my independent samples. I'm going to go ahead and put, have you experienced a microaggression? I'm going to make that my grouping variable. So either you have or you haven't. Now, a lot of people report have, and a lot of people report having not experienced it. We can actually divide people into different groups based on whether they've experienced microaggression based on this yes or no question. Now, we can talk about whether or not they feel they belong in their suite. You can have multiple independent variables here. Um, in this particular case, it looks like this could be very difficult for us to do. Um, dividing people up on the basis of this is not going to work very well. In this case, the variance is zero. There's not a lot of variability here. So we might have to try a different question. You will not have this issue with yours because it is a Likert scale. So um, let's go ahead and try uh, a different one. Um, let's, so belonging in suite didn't work. How about belonging at Cotty? We actually get something with belonging at Cotty. Um, so I want to alert you to what these different statistics mean. And what's cool about this video, it's going to highlight my cursor with a little ring so you can see exactly what I'm pointing at. So here, most people feel like they belong in their suite and most people, and that's true whether they've experienced a microaggression or not. So we aren't getting anything significant here. However, with belonging at Cotty, there are three things that are being reported here. We get a T statistic, which is here denoted with T. That's our test statistic that we're going to compare to a critical value. We have our degrees of freedom, which is N minus 1. We have 34 responses, so it's 33. And then we have our P value. So here's a couple of things that you need to look at. First of all, look at your test statistic. This is what you're going to report in your data analysis. And in particular, this is a T statistic of 0.5. Take my word for this. You'll understand this better soon. This is very, very low. This is probably not going to be significant, and I can tell that just from looking at the test statistic alone. However, if you need follow-up and you want to check that p-value, that's a p of 0.6. So in this case, the p-value is less than 0.05, and that's with a non-directional hypothesis. And what's actually pretty cool, you can specify your hypothesis in the data analysis. Um, there are a couple of different things you can add if you're interested. Um, I usually like to have an effect size. We have Cohen's D. It's a pretty small effect. We can also have a descriptive statistic. We can also have a plot with a 95% confidence interval. And here's how you can really tell Part of the reason that we get absolutely no effect with belonging in suite, there are so few people that uh, there, nobody feels like they don't belong in their suite. And we only really have a handful of people that have experienced, that have never experienced a microaggression. And that kind of explains the data. On the other hand, if we look at belonging at Cotty and whether or not they've experienced a microaggression, pay attention to your error bars. Are they overlapping? They sure are. And if they're overlapping, it probably means it's not really significant in this particular case. So this is one of the things you can do with p-tests. And by the way, I was wrong. You should be doing an independent samples with this, OK? So this is the first thing you can do. Now, here I have a metric of race and ethnicity as well. So if I was interested in seeing whether or not there was um, a case where maybe different races or ethnicities feel about belonging at Cotty. I could do an ANOVA. I'm 
not really going to talk about an ANOVA yet because you haven't learned about an ANOVA yet, and we're going to learn about t-test next week. Um, but you might want to consider correlational data. So, for example, maybe I look at things like this. Maybe I want to look at something that has multiple levels, like satisfaction with potty offerings of language. Most people aren't pretty happy with that. It, we should probably have more than French and Spanish. Um, in addition, let's go ahead and look at frequency of experiencing microaggressions and frequency of committing microaggressions. Um, and let's go ahead and put that belonging at Cotty. So when you do this, I'm going to move this over to the side really quickly. You will get a report for different correlation coefficients. So you'll get a different Pearson's R, and you will also get a p-value. Now, if you look at this box over to the side, one thing that you should consider is flagging significant correlations. And this will put an asterisk next to anything in your correlation coefficient that's significant. So if the p is less than 0.05, you get one asterisk. If the p is less than 0.01, you get two. If the p is less than 0.001, which absolutely does happen, you'll get three. As you'll notice, we only really have one, um, we only have one um, correlation coefficient. We actually have a positive correlation between the frequency of committing microaggressions and the frequency of experiencing microaggressions. And that is a 0.5 correlation, it's pretty solid, with a p-value of 0.02. And I would argue that the reason that this probably pops up, if you know what microaggressions are, odds are pretty good you know when you experience them and when you commit them yourself. So these are a few different things that you can do with um, JASP. Um, if you'd like to learn more about ANOVA, I will show you how to do ANOVA with JASP uh, in a couple of weeks. Maybe I'll do another screencast with some of my data so I can show you pretty quickly how that works. But this should get you through being able to do descriptive statistics, being able to do an independent samples t-test, and being able to get a correlation matrix with some plots. So. Hopefully we're all feeling pretty good about that and you can look at this anytime